So everybody, let's read the question first. Key word from the question, what is it? Hit me. Key word from the question sentence, what is it? Right? If we were cavemen and we could only say one word at a time, we want area. Boom. Right there, we want area. And everybody, once, <laughs> once we find, once we see a math word, a pure math word, a pure geometry word like area, what's the first thing I'm going to ask myself once I see the word area? Right. What's the shape? Because the shape is going to lead us into the formula. So you could, you could say, I'm, I'm going to take both of those as correct, the shape or the formula. Both of those are correct. Um, I would typically ask, what shape are we dealing with? Because once we know the shape, then we can say the area of that shape is formula. So boom, right there, we see area and everybody, there's a formula to it. What kind of a shape are we dealing with again? Yep, that's a rectangle, and we see that right here. A new rectangular desk. So right there, we know that the area is going to equal what, everybody? The area is going to equal what? What's the formula for a rectangle's area? Length times width. Absolutely. Remember, my math party people, acing the ASVAB is not just about watching me do it. It's better that you practice as well. It's about watching, practicing, and mastering the material. And the best way to do that is to start off with my free practice test because it comes with video solutions so you can try it out yourself, see all the mistakes that you've made, and then keep raising your score with those video solutions, organizing yourself so you can lower that test anxiety and raise your score. No excuses, it's completely free. So go ahead and click the link there or in the description. That way you can get started, raise your score, and do everything you need to do. Let's ace the ASVAB, but let's get back to the problem after you're done signing up. So everybody, is it true that at this point, you know, if the problem gave us the length and gave us the width, this would be a pretty easy problem? Is that true? Yeah, absolutely. If we knew what the length was and we knew, and we knew what the width was, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So with that said, oh yeah, we're good. Let's go ahead and see what the problem gives us. I'm only going to be looking for information related to the length and the width. That's all I care about. All I care about. Let's read. So it says, hey, she mentioned that the perimeter of the desk is 120. Perimeter? I don't care about that. Screw that. Don't worry about that. And that one of the sides measures 20 inches. Oh, right there. Great. Great right here. One of the sides measures 20 inches. That can be the length. That can be the width. I don't care. But I'm going to write that down right here, that my length I'm gonna say that my length is 20 inches. And the one thing that I'm confused on is, well, I just read the whole question, the whole problem. I don't see the width. I don't see the width. I don't see it. So everybody, the goal here at this point in time, we're looking for the area. We have the length, but we don't have the width. Is it reasonable to say that we're going to have to do some t detective work to figure out what the width is going to be? So that's the idea, guys. Like when it comes to problem solving and work problems, it's not always going to be laid out for you nice and pretty and bow tied. A lot of the times you're going to have to pause and say, wait, I still don't have this key piece of information. Let me take a detour and figure that out. And here's how that's going to work. Whenever you run into a situation, and you can go back on this recording or you can record what I'm saying right now or just write this down. But whenever you get to a point in a word problem where it seems like a straightforward solution, but you're missing a piece of information, you then want to go back to the problem and find out if there's anything else that can get you to that piece of information. Precisely what I mean is this. When I read through the information that I haven't used yet, perimeter 120. Don't worry about the 120. We have perimeter. Everyone, does perimeter of a rectangle include the width? Does that include the width? 
It absolutely does. The perimeter of a rectangle, its formula does include the width. And I'm going to show you the formula method, and I'm also going to draw the picture for you because I want you to be able to relate to what you see here. So let me draw the rectangle for us right here. And here's our 20 for the length. I don't know what the width is. But what we also know is that the perimeter, if we go all the way around, let me do this in blue here, the perimeter is 120 inches. If we go all the way around, this is what perimeter means. Going all the way around, P equals 120. Can anybody here give me the formula to the perimeter of a rectangle, please? What's that formula going to be? 4 times s, that's going to be for a square because a square has all four sides that are the same. What's the formula for a rectangle? Yeah, perimeter equals double the length plus double the width. And let me explain to you very briefly why that formula makes sense. Think about it. 2L, 2W, well, how many L's do you have? How many lengths do you have? One, two. How many widths do you have? One, two. So that's what that means. You're basically just adding up all the sides. That's what perimeter is. You add up all the sides. 2L plus 2W just means length, width, length, width. You have two of those lengths, two of those widths. That makes your formula. So hopefully that makes a little sense. But if you know, if you see this, well, hey, if your perimeter is 120, well, if you take away that 20 here and that 20 there, you're left with 80. And that means that 80 covers two of these widths. If the remaining two widths that you have is 80, what's one of those widths going to be? Right. So one of the widths, that means that two of those widths equals 80. So one width equals 40. Now, if this didn't make too much sense to you and you want to see it more of a, in terms of an equation way, watch this. Really, really quick math yeah. party people. While we continue this video, if you're enjoying it, which at this point, if you're watching, I know you are, please remember to like this video, comment your favorite part, and subscribe to the channel. That way you can help us spread the word about helping people raise their ASVAB scores just like we are. Let's keep getting the job done. Let's get back to the video. Appreciate you. I'm gonna put in the perimeter as 120, right over here. And I know that my length was 20. So we have 2 times 20 plus 2w. Well, 2 times 20 is going to be 40. Take away the 40. We're going to have, let me, show you, let me actually show you on both sides here. Minus 40 on both sides. We have ourselves 80 equals 2w. And the last thing that we'll do is divide both sides by that 2. And that's going to give you w equals 40. So you can see it both ways there, but hopefully that makes a little more sense in terms of how we had to take a detour using that perimeter to find the width. And now that we found the width, now we can solve the problem. Everybody, what's the last thing that we have to do now? What's, what's the only thing left to do with that 40? Right. Plug it into the area formula that we had all the way up here. And now we can solve. Now we can solve. So here what we'll say is that area that we were looking for, again, it still equals 20, but it's going to be times the 40 that we have. 20 times 40 is 800. 800 square inches. And as always, my party people, thanks for watching. You can subscribe with that button right there. And you can also see a link to a video just like this one right up there. But most importantly, if you want the program and you want to raise your score the right way, every step of the way with my support, there's that link at the bottom left. Go ahead, click that link, watch the video on how the program works, subscribe and raise your score.